Good evening, everybody. It's Daryl. How you guys doing? Um, before we just jump in and start talking, I uh, have a lecture or anything. I just wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, I've unmuted all your guys' mics. If you want to talk, you can talk. If you want to type in the chat, you can. But I just want to see how you guys are doing. I know this is a kind of a trying time. Um, you know, normally if we just focused in on just the lesson, that's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, this is the week that we move from the plan to working on the, the putting the presentation together. And to that extent, we've kind of streamlined the week where all you really have to focus in on is creating the presentation, doing the actual multimedia work. But um, uh, there's an awful lot going on in the outside world. So I just wanted to see if you guys were in a good space, if you were you know, in stressed, if you were having trouble uh, focusing on, on the classwork because of uh, you know, what's going on out in the wilder world or whatever. Uh, I just wanted to see if, if, if people were in situations where they're contained, you know, the difficulty of online education. It, it's actually ideal for, uh, you know, what they're asking everyone to do, which is stay at home and, and, and quarantine yourself. But um, you also can't concentrate on online education until you've got all the other aspects of your life lined up right. If your job's going okay, if you, things are okay with your family, if things are okay with your, your personal life, then you can get to school. Um, and so, there's all kinds of stress out there. I just want to get get a kind of check on you guys to see if you feel like, uh, you know, you're just ready to just jump in and start working on the presentation or if you're, you know, struggling, paddling because of all the things that are stresses that are going on out in the wilder world. Uh, and uh, I can't get a sense on that unless you guys tell me. So, uh, you know, whether you want to talk on the uh, out loud or you want to, mentioned in chat, you know, just let me know what's going on. One of the things that answers that question is that there are very few of you here. There are only four of you who have showed up so far, which is pretty low attendance, which I, I think means that you guys are kind of stressed. And I want to, I want to acknowledge that and uh, see if we can work around it. Are you guys excited? Are you, are you ready to start making your presentations? Uh, John says everything seems really hectic of late. Yes, that is a uh, nice statement what we can all agree with. So I just want to make sure you guys are in, in, in good shape to be concentrating on your your classwork. And, and uh, you know, if there's distractions, we want to acknowledge that. We want to be able to, to uh, incorporate that in so that we can get what we need done. And... Uh, um, you know, I'm here for whatever you guys need. I mean, uh, if you have a question about the, the, the reading or you have a question about some of the technology, I, I can easily answer those questions. You know, whether um, you're going to be able to uh, take off work or, or um, you know, get through the next couple of weeks with the quarantine or, or whatever. I'm not sure I can answer those questions, but we can at least talk about them. But um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions here. I thought you might be kind of um, uh, not sure where to begin. So, you know, I will I will try to go through things and we'll try to have a normal lesson today. Um, the plans that got turned in today, I was able to get turned back to you. Most of them were all spot on. So I think that this is a really smart class. I think you guys really get it. Uh, I think you know how to how to go about this. So what we're trying to do for week three is, is, is to eliminate a lot of the distractions. We still have some reading. So to that end, you know, uh, there's some, some chapters from Slideology. It's a couple of chapters from Resonate that we're asking you to read. But this week's discussion board is not a graded activity. So the only activity this week is the main assignment, which is creating the first draft of your presentation. And that flows directly from getting back 
uh, you know, my feedback on your plan. So most of you who've turned in your plan, you're spot on, you know who you're talking to, you've identified your audience, you've got a lot of elements in there. And so the process that we want you to go through is to take that plan, which is a series of ideas, and turn it into a script. You know, there's not an absolute requirement that you write a script, but it's a heavy suggestion. We want you to write a script so that you can control your vocal performance. If you write it down, you know exactly what you're saying. If you write it down, you can control the timing. The assignment is for a three to four minute presentation. If you're a little bit under or you're a little bit over, it's okay. But we wanna shoot for that amount of time. We wanna create a presentation that's approximately three to four minutes long. And by writing down what you have to say, you can control for that because we know that one page of double spaced writing equals about a minute spoken out loud. So three to four minutes is three to four pages. Uh, you write that much, you can kind of control the timing. Uh, and then once you've written it down, you have the ability to just say it out loud. You know, you don't want to ever record your, your, uh, your voiceover directly from having written it. You want to, you want to say it out loud first before you even try to record it. Because just getting those words out, you know, struggling with reading the sentences, you know, people can tell if you're you're reading something that you're you're recording something that you just looked at for the first time. They can they can hear the reading in your voice, uh, and if you're already familiar with the text, then it comes off much uh, more fluidly. You own that text. You you already know what you're going to have to say. You've already said some of these phrases out loud, so. You know, they're easier to form in your mouth and so forth. So rehearsal is a very good thing. And even still, uh, after you record it, if you don't like the first recording, you can you can do it again. It, it, in the digital world, it's really easy to just uh, delete the first take and record it again. So you can work on this. It won't take very long till you get a uh, recording that uh, you like, that has no mistakes, maybe has a little bit of your personality and the vocal recording, the vocal uh, performance. You know, I know that a lot of you did really great last week with the uh, emotional story. So I know you have the ability to use your voice, convey what you have to, to say. And the process I want you to go through is to write that script and record that voiceover audio first. Don't think about the slides, don't think about the visuals at all until you get that voiceover done. And then once you have that voiceover, that's the point at which you're going to start thinking about what images go along with what I have to say. Uh, how can I move these images, you know, uh, through time? How can I sync them up to my words? You know, how can I use the presentation tools at my disposal to give them the most power? And uh, speaking of presentation tools, we're going to give you maximum flexibility about what you want to use to put these together. You know, we, we've made a point of giving you Microsoft Office, which contains the latest version of PowerPoint. And so you may be tempted to use PowerPoint. That's a great tool. Uh, if you're not familiar with it or you're, you haven't used it very much, it might not be the very best tool. There's so many options to PowerPoint that sometimes uh, it's a little bit uh, hard to, to wrangle them around. Uh, some of you used Adobe Spark last week in telling your emotional story. If you had a good experience with that, I highly recommend that you just use it again because it's just so simple to use. We want the tech to get out of the way. This is not meant to be uh, a highly technical assignment. What we want to do is hear you tell your story, hear you, see you express your ideas. We want your content. And the simplest way you can put it together that you're familiar with, that you're comfortable with, is the best way to do it. So don't reach high for technology that you're not comfortable with because we don't want you struggling with the technology this week. We want you creating uh, audio and video and visuals and then using the technology that's the simplest that you can use to put it together. Some of you have uh, cinema skills, 
Some of you have used video editing programs. Some of you use things like Adobe Premiere and, and uh, um, uh, Final Cut Pro and iMovie and uh, Movie Maker. And those are great tools for putting together a presentation. Uh, but again, I want you to follow the process of doing the voiceover first and then adding visuals. And those visuals can be stills, they can be visual, video. And uh, those of you that were on camera, uh, if you liked being on camera, you can. Now, when we, want, when we say a presentation, we are absolutely wanting a certain number of slides in the presentation. So if you do this as a webcam video recording, uh, it's fine for you to be on camera, it's fine for you to have your head, your face in the shot, but throughout that video recording, you're going to need to insert a certain number of slides as well in order to make it a presentation. It cannot just be purely a, uh, a one-shot video recording like we, we, that was fine in the emotional storytelling for this final. You have to have a certain number of slides that you add that those slides, like in the TED Talk uh, assignment, you're picking a visual that adds to our understanding of what you have to say. So I want at least a, a, you know, a half dozen slides in a video performance. Um, and uh, if you don't know how to add slides to a video, then again, that might be tech that's uh, harder for you to accomplish than, than uh, uh, you're simply using um, a program like PowerPoint or Adobe Spark. And in addition to that, there are a number of online tools. I'm going to talk about those. Um, in the reading, the, uh, some of the, the new chapters from Slideology, uh, Nancy Duarte takes us through um, what she thinks presentations can do for us. And again, she's mentioning a lot of things that we've heard from her before and that are very important, not the least of which focus on the audience. You now know who you're talking to. You now know who you're asking for your dream job from. So you have to know who those people are so you can talk directly to them. You can speak to them about the, uh, the company that they run, the products that they have, your relationship to their products. You know, if you're a huge fan of their music, if you're a huge fan of the video games they make, you know, that's a legitimate part to put into your presentation. Now, no one's going to hire you because you like their stuff. You're going to have to be able to talk about your own skills, the things that you've learned, the, your knowledge of video game making or your knowledge of audio production so that you become a skilled person that they want to hire. So in telling them all these elements, you want to be able to craft it into a story. That's why we had you do all those bullet points about beginning, middle, and end. Once you put those bullet points together, you can look at them. You can, you can pick and choose some elements and, and, and focus on them and, and, and uh, gloss over other elements. And in putting those pieces together, you're creating a story, the story of you who you are and how you became that way. And that's what's going to keep people really interested in what you have to say. You want to tell them this information as a story. You have become a storyteller. We want you to create of your life a fascinating story that your dream employer wants to hear. And uh, in creating visuals, we want you to take the things that you're saying on the voiceover and bring them to life, illustrate them, show us visual analogs that help to tell the story. Sometimes the visuals can tell the story on their own. That's usually pretty rare. Mostly we're doing it with our voice. We're talking the story through and the visuals are helping us see that. So show, don't tell. And to that end, uh, I've got an exercise that I want us to work on. It's called visualizing ideas. Uh, and if you think about it, a lot of what you're saying is the stuff that would be in your, your resume. But you would not say your resume as a story. That's kind of like reading the phone book. Your, your resume is a series of, of facts. 
And so it's not all that interesting. You have to figure out a way to say the things that are in your resume in a way that is visual, that is exciting, that has media and interest and drama built into it. And to that end, I, I have a, a movie that I want you to watch and talk about it a little bit later. But I'm also one, we want to practice uh, coming up with visuals that say things that people hear all the time. Most of you on your resume are going to have things that are, a lot of everybody else has on their resume. You're going to say you're a self-starter, that you're a team player, that you're, you're, you know, you're somebody who's dependable. And that language has become so common that to say it is to just um, almost negate yourself. Everybody else says it the same way. But the way that you can win is that when you say it, uh, what everybody else says on the audio track, you then have the chance to let the visuals tell that story in a new and fun and dramatic way. So visualizing ideas is in, is the notion of taking concepts, things that are uh, hard to illustrate unless you actually have some creativity involved, and coming up with ways to explain that to people that is fun and exciting and, 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 and dramatic. And so that's an exercise that I have. I'm going to dump out of the uh, slides right now and bring this up. What I've done is I have created a Google shared document. And uh, I'm going to put it in the chat box right now. Those of you that are watching this video instead of being here live, the link to this uh, Google page is going to be in the discussion board this week. This week's discussion board is not mandatory um, participation, but I want you to go all, all go in and check it out because there are going to be useful tips and, and links in there and, and information for you. So it's, it's going to be stuff that's going to help you to build your, your presentation. To that end, the shared document uh, is going to help us think about um, how to visualize ideas. So a Google document is one where several people can edit it the same page at the same time. Now I have given everyone who links onto this page uh, full editing permissions. Slightly dangerous. Anybody that wants to can can select all and hit delete and wipe out the page, and we'll be SOL. But I think you know I think we can trust everybody to work together collaboratively. But we need a few rules. This is how it works. When you when you log on, each of you that log on, you're going to be shown up at the top as like a different little little animal in different color. And you see these different colors. The cursors are different colors as well. And where your cursor lies, that's where you're affecting the document. So the rules are we all want to work on a part of the document that someone else isn't working on. We don't want to wipe out anybody else's work. So the idea here is I've given you five things that you might have on your resume. Terms like adventurous, reliable, team player, eager, thinks outside the box. And I want you to come up with just the right visual that expresses that term in ways that, that meet your artistic ambitions and in ways that can reach that audience that you're looking for. I remember, it, we, could, we could do this all with cartoon art. But cartoon art is for fifth graders. You're going to be trying to impress someone that you want to hire you, someone who's probably more visually sophisticated than you are. So you, what you want to do is find the finest, most artistic, most uh, dramatic and expressive image you can to illustrate that concept. You're trying to create a metaphor here. And you're trying to actually impress the other people with your visual thinking. So um, a Google Doc allows each of us to, to have different parts of it. So in order for us to share, I've created a series of boxes here. And when you're gonna do this, you're gonna put your cursor in the big box. 
in order to drop an image in here. But before you ever do that, I want you to claim that box so that none of us are working on boxes that other people have. Here, I've done an example here. I have an image of a guy standing looking over the, over the mountaintop, and that stands in for adventurous for me. And I claimed that box. So if you have a, a word that you want to work on, the words are going to go down each row. And there are plenty of boxes, so you don't have to be very, all at the very top. But you can you can select any box you want, and you don't you can do as many or as few of these as you want. You don't you don't have to do this at all. But it's a good exercise. It will help to hone your thinking in terms of finding imagery for your project to try to illustrate one of these terms or another. So if you choose a term that you like, the first thing you want to do is claim that term. So below each big box is a small box that has the word name on it. And you'll just write your name in it. So I'm also going to do another one right now. I'm going to do team player. So I've already put my name under here. And now I have my cursor. If you see the black cursor, that's my cursor. Uh, and I'm going to put an image here. So to search, this is uh, a page written by Google. So they've, they've built search right into the page. It's very convenient. You go to insert image, search the web. So right here, insert image, search the web. And when you do that, you get a, a Google search box on the right hand side of the page. Very useful. And now what most of you are going to be tempted to do is put in the exact term here. And so you, you can just put that term in and there'll be a series of answers. Now, don't be the guy that always picks the very first image. You know, that's, you know, uh, pretty lame. I want you to search until you find the image that's just right for you. So here we see an awful lot of teams. We see team players, illustrated, etc. cetera. Uh, you don't necessarily need to search on exactly the term itself. If you have an idea of what you want, I have an idea for a picture that I want here, and I don't necessarily need to put the word team player in. I'm thinking of skydivers linking together in the sky. So I'm going to put in sky diving team. And now I have a series of images that make sense for me. So I want to find people forming a link together and someone reaching in to join them. And you see we have a series of dramatic images. Here I find one that's very dramatic. I'm selecting it. When I select the image, it has a blue check mark on it. And I get a bar down to the bottom that says one image selected insert. So in order to insert that image into my space, I've got to click on the word insert. And then that image gets put at the cursor. That's what I'm asking you to do. So uh, look through, choose a word that you like to illustrate and find out the image that best expresses who you are and that you think will have a dramatic impact on the people that you're talking to and that you want to impress. So that's the artistic challenge. I mean, first you want to create an image that actually expresses that notion. You're creating visual metaphors. What is the metaphor for reliable? You know, maybe somebody leaning on anybody else or somebody giving someone a helping hand or something like that. So you, you want to create stories and and drama and 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 uh, visual analogs analogies uh with the images that you choose and then you want to find images that are actually um emotional connecting uh admirable and then uh beyond that uh, there's all, all kinds of ways that you can think about connecting with your audience if you're someone who's uh, a video gamer and you're talking to someone who runs a video game, then maybe most of your art might skew towards being video game art. So, you know, I don't know how many skydiving images there are in video game art, but it, you, I'm sure that with a, a, a role playing game, you could find some keen player video game art and so forth. And you don't have to do that, but you're, you you want to think about ways that you're creating connections between you 
and the audience because the more you know who your audience is, the more you can talk to them directly. And that's what this is all about. It's about your finding the right image that makes that. So I'm going to let you guys work on this a little bit while I keep going. I'm just going to go back to um, the slides here. And you guys can keep working. We'll, take, we'll come back and take a look at that. And again, those of you that are watching this on video, I'll show you where the link is in just a second. But it's you can get to it from the discussion board, and you can work on that all through the week. So that board, that uh, that that exercise will be up, and you can all take part in that. So um, this is the time in which we have done all our brainstorming. We've got all the elements in our story, and now we have to figure out how do we tell that story? How do we put that structure together? Last week, you figured out how to tell your emotional story about your piece of media. Uh, this week, how do you tell the story of who you are? And uh, most of us are going to go in a kind of chronological order. You'll talk about how you got interested in what you were doing and then what experiences you had uh, in your early years, your high school, or maybe you were in the military. and That formed a lot of your character. And then you went to school. We want to talk about your schooling. And we want to talk about uh, you know, the, the recent portfolio work you've done. And remember, we're projecting all this into the future. So a lot of this is stuff that you haven't done yet that you're actually imagining or, you know, uh, uh, creating fictionally. But you want to put that story together. And uh, figuring out the structure of the story, the way that you want to tell that story uh, is part of your job. Figuring out a way that's going to make people stay with it and be interested. And to that end, I have put in the discussion board a couple of movies for you guys to watch. Uh, the first one is a TED Talk. It stars a fellow named Simon Sinek, and it's called Start With Why. So I mentioned that uh, this project is a little bit like turning your resume into a story. Well, if you simply read your resume, it would be like reading the telephone book. It would just be boring. It'd be a list of facts. Wouldn't be interested in, wouldn't be interesting. Wouldn't have a lot of drama. But it would have a lot of necessary information. I did this at this point in time, and then I did that, and I got this degree, et cetera. Those are the facts and figures of your resume. But it's not all that interesting what you did. And what Simon Sinek tells us is if you want to tell, if you want people to get interested in your story, then you just want to flip that perspective a little bit. And instead of telling people what you did, tell them why you did. You can go right back to your resume. And for every item on your resume, instead of saying what you did, I was in the band, I went on tour with, uh, you know, uh, Aerosmith. I, I, uh, I hitchhiked from, from uh, New Jersey to California. Instead of saying facts, tell us why you did it. What was the intrinsic motivation that made you want to go do out that item on your resume that you worked at McDonald's for 12 years or whatever, two years or half a day? Um, start with why. Whatever the item is that is part of your life that you need to talk about, Tell us what propelled you into it. Tell us what was the interior thinking that made that happen. That's an interesting story. That's what we want to hear. So for all the items of your life that you want to talk about, if you're having trouble figuring out how to tell this story, how to create an interesting story out of your own life, tell us why you did each of these events. Maybe you don't know but maybe you could come up with some interesting guesses and so forth. That uh, will create uh, um, a dramatic story that people want to hear. Uh, people having trouble with the audio? How many of you can't hear? Is everybody here able to hear? I can hear. 
Okay. Well, uh, one person is having trouble. Maybe that's you, and you might have to to work on your own. But I, I think we're doing okay. Uh, I hope so. I never can tell. Uh, the second video is a little uh, more obscure. It's called How to Structure a Video Essay by Tony Zhou. And he basically tells us the story of a documentary by Orson Welles. And the interesting thing about the documentary is that it doesn't just have one subject, uh, and not just two, not just three, but it has six different subjects going on. And instead of being six separate films, he weaves them all together. So he starts to tell a part of one story, and then he jumps to something else, and then he jumps to something else. So he's telling all these elements in parallel. And it's that actual structure that creates drama, that the notion of separate items that you don't know exactly why they're being told this way creates a kind of mystery that propels you to, to keep listening. Now, this is something that might apply to your life. If you have a number of things that you did in your life that you weren't sure why, or maybe you bounced around a lot. Maybe you were in the military and you worked on cars and you studied graphics and you did tattoos. And then suddenly it all came together when you started your own company creating art decals for cars or something like that. So it may be that you need to tell your story in parallel rather than chronological history. And that's a legitimate structure. So um, this video might not be for everybody, but it will open your eyes to the different ways there are to watch um, um, or to create stories. And uh, just a second, I want to I want to jump into the um, the discussion board. Now, like I said, this week's discussion board does not uh, have a grade attached to it. It has zero weight. So you do not have to make a post. But I suggest that everyone go in and check out what's there. It's an open board for discussion problems. And if, if you guys have a uh, uh, want, want a preview on, on some of your script, if you wrote your script and you'd like people to give you comments on it before you read it out loud, before you start recording it or you record 30 seconds of voiceover and you'd like people to talk about your use of visual vocal toolbox and so forth, you can get feedback from your classmates here. And then I've also posted, like I say, a couple of videos that I think might be interesting for you to watch. And I have posted a number of links here. Uh, one link is to a listing of 31 different, well, it's up to 40 now, 40 different online software tools that you can use. Now, not all of them are great, but there are a lot of different ones that are really good. And, and the ones that we recommend, I've got listed here. So we recommend Adobe Spark. We recommend VoiceThread. VoiceThread is a low key program, but if you're on an Android phone and that's your only tool, you only have an Android phone and it's not a newer one, those phones are not capable of running a lot of the newer programs. You won't run PowerPoint. It might not actually get onto Adobe Spark, et cetera. And we've discovered that VoiceThread is one of the few programs that older Android phones can use. So if you're limited by the phone that you have um, and you, you still want to create a presentation with it, we suggest that you try VoiceThread. It's not very hard to use. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, but it will work with a variety of different tools. It works with, with uh, iPhone phones as well, but um, it just has a limited amount of tech built into it. Emaze and Prezi are popular online tools that have a variety of different interesting uh, user interfaces for going through slides from point to point. Now, a lot of these online tools, Adobe and Spark and VoiceThread, each allow you to record audio within them. So they are self-contained. But Emaze, Prezi, Haiku Deck, and Google Slides, none of them have vocal capabilities. So if you want to record audio, you're going to have to record it on your own. And just like last week, you can record it with your phone, you can record it with your computer. If you're using your computer, we recommend Audacity. 
as the audio editing software. It's very simple to use. It's free. It's open source software. You can install it on both either Windows or, or uh, Mac computers, and it's very easy to use and learn. If you're using your Android phone or your iPhone, we have a, a variety of audio tools listed here. So there are links here to audio programs that you can use to record your voice on the phone if you have an Android phone or you have an iPhone. And then uh, the link to the exercise we were doing with earlier, visualizing ideas, is here at the end of this list. So those of you that are watching on video, if you want to participate, uh, this link is here. You can click on that. It will take you directly to um, the box. And you can see that uh, people are starting to work on things. And there'll be plenty of spaces for you if you want to uh, continue to work on that. But uh, that is, uh, those links are here. And those of you that want to add new links, if you discover a program that you think works really well, or you want to recommend something or, or so forth, uh, you know, give each other tips and trick, uh, 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 feedback. And another important thing is that this discussion board is going to remain open for two weeks. It's not going to close at the end of this week. So we want to use this discussion board next week to get feedback on our full completed presentations. When you complete your presentation and you turn it into me on Sunday night for a grade, I also want you to post it here and try to get feedback from your classmates. Now, this is a voluntary thing. I can't guarantee that you'll get feedback, but uh, most students who want feedback, they give other students feedback. So uh, it does work in a sort of uh, take a penny, leave a penny fashion uh, for those people that, that want to take advantage of that. So uh, this discussion board is here. And remember, it's going to be available for the next two weeks. So it's not going to close down at the end of the week. Um, another part of the reading that you'll be working on this week has to do with how you present yourself to an audience. People have been standing up in front of audiences for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks uh, re were really into it. They, they, they did it as a form of entertainment, public speaking. And um, a famous ancient Greek, Aristotle, posited the three pillars of public speaking. Well, the three ways in which an audience, can, or that you can present yourself to an audience based on your relationship to them. So the first one was ethos, the appeal to trust or credibility. You stand on the stage and you ask people to believe you because you are a trustworthy, believable person. Ethos is the appeal to trust. So people will believe you because you've got a great backstory. People might believe you because you've got a great resume. You're a doctor or you're some famous person and, and that'll be happen. But people will also just believe you because you have lived experience. And you just stand up there and say, you know, I did this, this happened to me. If you're a trustworthy, credible person, people will believe you. Now, if you're not necessarily someone that's got that sort of sense of authority about them, uh, you might want to appeal to their emotions. That's the appeal to pathos. Pathos is the appeal to emotion. So if, if you're a, a new student and, and, or a new graduate and you don't have a huge resume, but you've got a lot of enthusiasm, You've got a great love for this company's games. Maybe you want to create a feeling of sympathy or empathy. You want to show images that are uh, create happiness or you know make a smile to, to uh, people's uh, hearts or whatnot. But you're not appealing to their to their uh, um, sense of smarts. You're appealing to their emotions. And then the third way you can appeal to an audience is to their sense of logic. Logos. Logos is the appeal to logic. You're making a very factually based argument. And in this case, you're actually asking the audience to be skeptical. You're asking them, try to poke holes in my argument. If you can't, you must agree with me. So when you state a fact, you say where that fact came from. You give us footnotes and, and references and things like that. Uh, this is a logos based argument is uh, very much 
backed up with uh, facts and figures and statistics. So each of these has different components about them. The appeal to ethos, the audience asks, does the audience respect you? Does the audience believe that you're of good character? Does the audience believe that you're generally trustworthy? Are you the kind of person that can stand up there and will hear the hail in your voice? Does the audience believe that you are an authority on this speech topic? And authority sometimes comes from your resume or your job title. Sometimes it comes from your lived experience or your voice. So uh, the, the reason people have to trust you may vary, but it's based on trust, that you're the person that they want to hear this news from. In pathos, does the audit, do your words evoke feelings of love, sympathy, fear? Now, in pathos, this cuts uh, both ways because you can make people feel good or you can make people feel bad. And uh, those are powerful uh, tools and they can get away with you, away from you. Um, do your visuals evoke feelings of compassion, envy? Does your characterization, characterization of the con competition evoke feelings of hate, contempt? Now, this is not something that, that's ever going to affect you in this particular presentation. But oftentimes, uh, this is, happens an awful lot in advertising. Instead of making people like you, you want to get people to dislike the other choice so that you become the lesser of two evils. This happens an awful lot in political advertising. We are now in an era of political you know, uh, uh, campaigning and debate. And, and you hear the term negative ad. A negative ad is when someone releases um, a commercial that doesn't say, I am great, but says the other guy is terrible. And those are appealing to pathos. So pathos can bring up good emotions and bad emotions. But it's a very, very powerful thing. And you have to be very careful with those bad emotions because they can get carried away. You can make people, uh, uh, you can hit, you can hit the wrong button, or you can you can have bad reactions. Uh, and it, uh, if you're just getting started, the easiest, safest thing is just to make people like you, make people feel happy with uh, positive emotions. But if uh, appeal to pathos cuts both ways. Logos, uh, does your message make sense? Is your message based on facts, statistics, and evidence? Will your call to action lead to the desired outcome that you promised? This is almost like the final summation in a legal case. The lawyer stands up and says, we've learned this, we've learned that, so-and-so said such-and-such, and therefore you must acquit my client or buy my product or join this cause. Whatever the desired outcome is, you have built a case for that uh, uh, statement by statement. So the appeal to logos is one that necessarily uh, needs to be um, very, very buttoned up. If there's a fact, you say where it came from. If there's a chart, you, you, you reference it. It has lots of footnotes. People want to know where you got your facts so that uh, they can make sure that you're telling them the truth. So all three of these have their own uh, particular relations to the audience. Sometimes they overlap a little bit. Sometimes you know, it might be a little bit of ethnos, a little bit of pathos, and there might be some overlap there. Sometimes the logos can overlap a little bit. Uh, it's rare that you can create an argument that reaches all three, but if you do, you certainly you know, uh, uh, made your point because um, you, you've, got, you've, you've got a little bit of uh, everyone's attention at that point. So those are elements that are gonna go into creating your presentation. I want you to work all week creating your presentation. Um, you can turn it in whenever you want, but it's not due till Sunday. So I'd like you to take the whole time, you know, take the first couple of days to get your 
script right and then your voiceover right. And once you've got your voiceover, then you can start working on, this, on the, the uh, scripting program and add visuals to it. What I'm expecting, uh, what we're asking for is the first draft, but that does not mean a rough draft. First draft means a completed project. I want all the audio in place and I want all the images in place. So I want you to have the completed project turned in by Sunday. That's what we're working on this week. Uh, it's a lot to expect, but we're trying to take everything else off your plate so that you can, you can get that done. And I'm going to be around to help with any technical problems you, you guys might encounter. And uh, when you turn it in, it, uh, and don't forget to watch this movie here. It actually takes us back through some things that we've learned, and it's a really helpful uh, um, review. If you're creating a, a, a project or if you're creating a presentation file, you can turn in that presentation file. For instance, if you're working in PowerPoint, you can turn in the PowerPoint project. Um, I can, as long as I can play it back, it'll be fine. Uh, if you create something complete, it might be exported to video. And Adobe Spark does that. Adobe Spark gives you an MPEG-4 video. And that's a terrific way to turn in your work because the audio and visuals are locked. And uh, we have the ability to turn that in directly or you have the ability to put that on YouTube and, and upload it or whatnot. But if you're working on a, uh, a project file, like a PowerPoint file, uh, and, and you get to a point where um, maybe you've got the audio done and you've got the, the visuals done, but you don't have them put together. For the first draft, I will allow you to turn them in separately. And then we will work in the last week on getting them integrated together. But for the most part, you should be able to get your audio put into your PowerPoint and turn them all in as a single file. And you would just drop that PowerPoint file here. I'll get it and I'll be able to play it back on my PowerPoint system. Now, uh, before I quit today, there is something I want to show you and share with you in PowerPoint. Because one of the things about PowerPoint is it's so powerful that they they can't make everything kind of obvious. They, they hide some of the stuff that we need to know. And I need to know that you guys know it. So I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to just create a... Uh, a, a PowerPoint project really quickly. The slide one is always going to be your title slide. So I'm going to put my title here, my brand. And so that'll be my slide one. And I'm very quickly going to create a, a couple more slides. I'll give them some very uh, fancy names. This is going to be slide two. And uh, this will be slide three, and I'll do one more. Uh, I'll call him slide four. Why not? All right. So what I wanted to, to explain to you is that some of the features of audio in PowerPoint are hidden, and you don't, you cannot see them until you actually start working with audio. So a lot of times people think that the only way to put audio on slides is to put it on per slide. That is not the way we want you to work. We want you to create a single audio file, three to four minutes long, and then you can sync slides up to it. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna show you right now how. Uh, you can either record that single audio file in PowerPoint, or you can record it somewhere else. You can record it on your phone, or you can record it in Audacity. If, if you did, uh, if you recorded it somewhere else, you would then move to slide one, and with your, you know, cursor on slide one, you'd go to insert audio from file, and you'd load the external file that you created. But if you're actually going to do the audio in PowerPoint, which if you're working with PowerPoint, there's no need not to to just use their audio feature. Uh, the last option, record audio, has a little recorder built into it. Now, it's not as uh, fully featured as Audacity, but it will allow you to record. So uh, all you need to do is hit the red button and you start to record. It's recording my voice right now. You can see that it's running. 
And until I hit stop, it's going to keep recording so I can just do this all the way through. Now, if I make a mistake and I don't like what I'm doing, I can hit cancel and I can start over again. But here I recorded 14 seconds. I hit insert and it inserts this audio onto slide one. Now, if we look at the menus that are available, there are eight menus available in PowerPoint right now. Home, insert, uh, draw, design, transitions, animations, slideshow, review, view. There's nothing about audio here. But when I have audio on my file and I select it, you can see that I've got it selected with a white box around it. All of a sudden, there are two more audio menu, two more menus that came up. And those menus only appear when you have audio selected. PowerPoint doesn't necessarily tell you that up front. So that's what I'm telling you right now. When you want to work with audio, the first thing you do is insert the audio. And then with the audio selected, you have uh, options for controlling it. So then we want to go to the playback menu and we want to tell it to play automatically. We don't want people to have to click to initiate the audio. We want it to play automatically when the program starts. And very importantly, we want it to play across slides. If you do not select this option, play across slides, then all the option audio that you put on slide one will never go past slide one. It'll just stay there. But when you click this option, then PowerPoint knows what you're planning to do, and it will now play the audio through the entire program. So having done that, I now have the ability to take my three to four minute uh, presentation and spread it amongst all the slides. How do I do that? Well, uh, I go up to the slideshow menu, and that's also at the top here, and I choose an option called record slideshow. When I go to when I hit record slideshow, PowerPoint's going to go into playback mode and it's going to show me slide one, and it's going to start playing the audio automatically, and it will stay on slide one until I click, and it will. When I click on the slide, it will advance. So what I want to do is play the audio and advance at the moment when I want it the audio to go to the next slide. And I'm going to play the thing all the way through and it's going to distribute my audio amongst the various slides. So let me do that right now. I'm going to hit record. Button and you start the record. Now I'm in playback mode. My voice right now. You can and I'm going to choose to go forward right now. I hit stop. It's going to and then I'm going to go forward again. Do this all the way through. I'm going to go forward I'm again. And I don't like what I'm doing. And I'm going to stop. And now it has distributed the audio among my four slides. Tells me, do I want to say this? I say yes. And when I come back, I can see that it has put the first five seconds of audio on slide one, the second two seconds of audio on slide two, two seconds of audio on slide three, and the last second of audio on slide four. And if this were four minutes, I could go all the way through. And um, if I didn't get the sync the way I wanted, all I have to do is come back, hit record slideshow again, and redo it over again. And I can keep doing it till I get it right. So you have a lot of control over getting the sync just perfect. And once I have you know, a dozen slides or so, if I choose to change the order and I say, well, I want slide seven to be slide eight and move them around, I can just move the slides, rerun, record slideshow, and the order is all fixed. I don't have to have, uh, you know, I don't have to completely redo the audio because I'm moving the slides around. So, that's a very powerful feature that you have in PowerPoint, but you wouldn't know anything about it unless you'd actually selected up the audio in slide one, those extra menus appearing. So I want you to make sure you know how to do that because I really want you all to work in the format that Nancy Duarte wants us to do, which is write your story down, record your story, get your voiceover audio first, and then start working on the slides. I don't want anybody to open up PowerPoint and start making slides and add audio after the fact. That is going to be an inferior way to create your presentation. And I want you to at least try doing it Nancy Duarte's way for this project. Do I have any questions?
All right. Well, as I was saying at the beginning of the, the day, um, we are in new territory here with uh, all the stuff that's going on in the wider wider world, uh, clo uh, school closings and, and uh, so forth. Uh, and in fact, uh, Full Sail has made an announcement that all campus classes are moving to online. So you guys are no longer just uh, half the class. You're 100% of the class. Everybody who's on campus as of today is uh, is working on at home from online. And until uh, um, the uh, uh, coronavirus goes away, you know that's going to continue to be the place. So uh, um, I want you guys to know you're the vanguard of everything. Uh, and uh, if, if you can make it work, then everybody else can make it work. But uh, um, we're here to make sure that everybody has a good experience, that things are going on well for you, and uh, we want you to be able to do that. I hope some of you were able to participate in Hall of Fame Live last week. That was our big hurrah. We had everybody on campus doing that, and then uh, now we were all shut down. Everyone's working from home. Uh, so again, if I have any questions, uh, if you have any questions later in the week, I'm here. I'm very wanting to help you get through any technical hurdles you have. Your presentation should not bog down because you don't know how to get something done. Uh, I'm really interested in your ideas and we will figure out the easiest way to get things done technically. We'll make sure we'll get everybody through that. So stay in touch with me. Let me know how you're doing. Anybody that's having problems, get a hold of us. And uh, everybody stay safe. Everybody stay well this week and be creative. Have a terrific time. Thanks.